Hello, 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 BookTube. How are you doing? Welcome back to Cheers Kevin Reads, where Cheers Kevin sometimes reads. Cheers Kevin, of course, being me. And today, it is uh, the end of September. Not exactly today, but it's uh, as close to as close as we're going to get if we are re recording these uh, to go up on Wednesdays. And that means it's time for me to go ahead and uh, give you my wrap up. All of the books that I've read this month, talk about the ones that I like, the ones that I didn't like, the ones that, uh, that you know were amazing. Um, now I in in I need to make some caveats. One, I'm I'm here because I have this spreadsheet with all of the things that I've read because there are 42 titles and I'm not going to I'm not gonna, I'm just I'm not going to go and be like all right let me memorize the three titles and the authors and then record that clip and then go okay I'm going to refer to these notes because it would just take a very long time also in deference to editing Kevin uh, I'm not going to be putting up the covers for all of those I need to figure out a better way to do the these wrap up things because I listen to so many audiobooks so I don't have like physical books I can't just be like all right this one and then of course I pick up a physical book Completely undermines my point, but anyway, forty-two things. We're gonna, we're gonna just, we're gonna do it with words, because it's booktube, right? We like words. We're generally, generally fans of words. Um, so as, uh, as usual, actually, the the one graphic that I will show you, and I'm clicking over to for myself for whatever reason, because I'll put this up on the screen. You can see. The, my 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 pie chart of book awesomeness. So I uh, I pulled everything off of Goodreads, and so I can sort of have a general remembrance of like, oh yeah, this is roughly what I thought. And you'll see that there are five percent of the books that I read were five stars. Um, we had most of sixty percent of the stuff that I read was three stars. We had a little more four stars, and we had uh, some some less two stars. You notice there are no one stars. Now, I, I need to be better about, I think I think I need to start dishing out some, maybe I'm just reading good books, though. I got to, I don't want to, I don't want to grade everything on a curve. I feel really uncomfortable giving out one stars, because, like, this is somebody's baby. Somebody invested, like, three years of their life at, at a minimum on this thing, and what am I going to do? You're like, nope, I, you, your, everything that you have done is now invalidated. Not that my giving a bad review is going to do that, but it just, it feels weird, right? Um, so yeah, I really don't like, I don't like to give out one-star reviews. Um, generally, I'm pretty stingy with five stars, but there, there were some, there were some good ones this time. Um, but everything has been pretty middle of the road. Um, looking at the split between the four and twos, I guess I am a little bit more uh, generally positive than negative, although it could just be that I've read some, read some good things. But of course, let's start with the bottom of the list, the two-star reviews. This is how I do this. I work with the ones that I didn't, I didn't so much like, and then I, and then I build up. Um, and generally, I afford these little ones, these, these little ones, these lower ones, not much time, because I'm not a huge fan. So, without any further ado, here are the two-star books. First one, Trump the Art of the Deal by Donald Trump. Ghostwriter. Nope, not a fan. Second one on the list, also a two-star review. Stronger Together by Hillary Clinton. And that other guy, but doesn't even show up on Goodreads as the lead author, so also not great. Crippled America, How to Make America Great Again by Trump. Also worse than the worse than the other one. Um, they also have retitled it. It's now Great Again, How to Fix Crippled America or something. As though like they were like, you know, Cripple's kind of an offensive. Why don't we put that in the sub? That's not going to matter. Uh, no, actually, I think it's more of a great versus great, like trying to, it's more of like a psychological force in terms of, anyway. Um, so, yeah, I try, I decided I'd go through and read the political books. So I read the, the, the election books for both of them. And then I read a not election book for both of them. Uh, okay. We're not going to get into politics. But as, as far as books go, they were technically books. That's that's all I can say. Anyway, The 10X Rule, The Only Difference Between Success and Failure by Grant Cardone. Uh, I feel like there are more than one differences. There, 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 there are several differences. The Code of the Extraordinary Mind, 10 Unconventional Laws to Redefine Your Life and Succeed on Your Own Terms by Vishen Lakhiani. Uh, just, just come on, it's self indulgence. All right, the girls by Emma Klein. Now this is the one. This is like probably the only one that everyone else is going to be like, "What are you talking about? This wasn't meant." I didn't. This just didn't. It doesn't. It didn't resonate with me at all. Um, it did. Re it, 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 it like I just. It, it just fell completely flat in a way that makes me think like there's something wrong with me. Like, because clearly this makes sense to some people. Like to some people it matters, but no, not for me. No, not my thing. 
Fail You, The Promise of Higher Education by Charles J. Sykes. Uh, this, so this is a criticism of, uh, you know, upper college education and uh, the, the way that we were investing in it. And I agreed, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of sympathetic to the idea, but it becomes pretty clear that the, 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 the author just has a bone to pick, just hates academia, academia and, and it just, it ends up, it ends up undermining his point. Um, so it just ended up being annoying. Like, ah, school is dumb. Um, anyway. Um, and then the only one that kind of doesn't fall in these non-fiction-y, oh, well, I guess the girls was fiction as well. Um, but Swordplay, which is one of the early Forgotten Realms books, because I'm trying to read some of those by Clayton Emery. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the worst thing, but it really wasn't, it wasn't particularly engaging either. So that ended up getting a two stars. And that wraps up our two stars for this month. Next, to wrap up the uh, political nightmare, um, Hard Choices by Clinton. This one got a three, by Hillary Clinton. This one got a three star because this was actually kind of enjoyable to read a little, like it was, it was, it was not great, but it was like, this is okay. Yeah, this is a book that can be read. Um, it, was, it was not bad. So out of the four, both of Trump's books were two stars. One of Hillary's was a two star and Hard Choices, which was more of a memoir than, I mean, obviously you presume if someone's going to be president, then everything they have ever, ever written has like an ulterior motive of like trying to aid their uh, presidential options. But um, this was more of a memoir. I was like, okay, this is a book. Um, and then we have The Lost Voyager and The Terminal War. Now, these are three, uh, these are two books in the Carson Mack Adventure series by A.C. Hadfield. Um, these are fun books. And actually, the first one is somewhere else in this list. And because I'm not grouping it over here, you can know that it is more, in a th more than a three star. This is enjoyable. This uh, reminded me a little bit of, uh, it reminded me a little bit of Firefly. It's a little Firefly-y, which of course gets me all excited. Uh, Heart of a Lion, A Lone Cat's Walk Across America by William Stolzenberg. Um, now this is um, a book that, I, an audio book that I listened to specifically because I have started watching the narrator uh, on YouTube. Um, if you go and uh, and you do a search for Booth Junkie, um, this is a guy who has a, has a whisper room booth and he, he talks about microphones and various things and editing and all of this sort of stuff. And I was like, oh, this guy is, this guy seems really cool. Why don't I see what uh, what he's what he's recorded? And then just I, that was the one that was available on Audible, so I went and I got it. Um, this is a story about uh, basically just kind of the history of how we deal with how we've dealt with mountain lions in the U.S. The 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 summary of that is that hunters are terrible. And aminals are awesome. Uh, so there's a little bit of, I mean, either bias or accuracy, depending on what your attitude is toward things um, in the story. I don't know. It was an interesting read. And uh, I, I really, uh, you know, I like the author and I'm glad to be able to support that. Now we have the only book that is a reread for me because I read this back in high school and I was like, I want to know if this is accurate, if this still seems very scary and accurate to me. Um, I read reread Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Didn't enjoy it as much. I assumed that this would be a four or a five star for me. I love me some 1984 and I remember reading, I read 1984 in high school and then I read Brave New World to sort of contrast the two. You're like, all right, so these, um, I found that, wow, my memory of this story is a little bit different from what it actually is. Um, I'm not, I don't know, I don't know if it's just the memory has changed it or just I was not paying enough attention when I was, a, uh, when I was in high school. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, it seems, it seems less, seems less impactful now, which surprised me because I thought like, oh yeah, this is just like the Bible for what we are turning into, right? Yeah, exactly, right? No, and now, now that's Animal Farm, right? Okay, anyway, Lust and Wonder by Augustine Burroughs. Um, this was fun. This was sassy. This is a, this is a memoir. And it is good. Um, speaking of sassy, we have Cold Sassy Tree. And my main my brain makes connections in very obvious ways. Um, by Olive Ann Burns. And this is a this is a story about growing up in the South, in the South Times. Um, and the narrator has a nice southern drawl on the audiobook version because almost all of the stuff that I read was in audiobooks. Um, a lot of this is because uh, you Amazon Prime uh has suddenly offered this some free audiobooks on Audible. And so I was like, oh, sure, let me go through all of these in case, because I wasn't sure, like, are these all just like, these are the books that you get, or are they going to be staggered out? Who knows? Um, so I was like, let me try and listen to all of them. So then if they start rotating stuff out, I'm not going, oh, no, I missed that one. Um, now we have a chunk of, uh, there was a whole section of, like, self-help or 
blah stuff. So I'm just going to run through all of these because there's not a ton to say about all of these. But The Practicing Mind, Bringing Discipline and Focus into Your Life by Thomas Sterner. Shark Tank, Jump Your Business, How to Launch and Grow a Business from Concept to Cash by Michael Parrish Dudell. The Confidence Gap by Russ Harris. Buddhism for Beginners by Thubton uh, Chodron. No Excuses, The Power of Self-Discipline by Brian Tracy. Beyond Happiness, The Zen Way to True Contentment. Uh, yeah, okay, we can stop with that section. Oh my god. Okay. These, well, no, we'll add this one here too. Thrive, the third metric for redefining success and creating a life of well-being, wisdom, and wonder by Ariana Huffington. Uh, no, that one, that one I did, I did actually pay for. But anyway, all of these self-help books, they are here because they weren't totally useless. Um... I mean, this is the thing with business books or self-help books or things like that, is that generally you're not you're not picking this up being like, oh, this is going to be my Bible. This is going to transform my life. You're picking them up and going like, oh, maybe this maybe those be some helpful ideas. And even if they're not, it'll be helpful to like kind of reinforce the generic general, like you should have a better attitude and work on yourself and stuff. Um, you know, it won't be the worst thing to hear. Um if, if there was a nonfiction book that, that if there was a business book that like, is like, oh my God, this is actually amazing. This provides a whole bunch of information. This is, this is incredible. That would end up being more than a three-star review. Like the bar is very low to create a, create a good business book, but also so many books tend to fail that bar. <laughs> Anyway, um, Stitches, a handbook on meaning, hope, and repair by Anne Lamott. Um, Anne Lamott, so I like, uh, I, I read Bird by Bird, like, uh, a year or two ago. It's a fantastic book on writing that I would certainly recommend. Stitches, I was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll uh, there's some more Anne Lamont. Let's listen to some Anne Lamont. Oh, this was also on the on the free free stuff as well. I was like, yeah, we gotta listen to that. Um it was it was not bad. It was not nothing to really speak about. And now I've gotta I've gotta scroll down because we, we gotta we gotta pick up the pace here. We're already 12 minutes in. This is what happens when you read 42 books in a month. Um okay. Uh, what did, let's see stitches yes so I have yeah I have a section of three books here that uh, well no we'll talk about those at the at the end of this section so Dharma Punks a memoir by Noah Levine uh, this actually was very interesting uh, this is uh, so uh, Noah Levine is a Buddhist he's the son of a, a great Buddhist teacher um, but uh, Noah had like a big druggy past and it was actually interesting kind of reading what his experience was like moving from that type of experience to uh, to something else. Uh, Time Enough for Love by Robert Heinlein. I'm trying to remember if I talked about, I don't know if I, I, this may, I may have briefly mentioned that at the end of, at the end of, uh, September. So there may be a, no, I don't think so. Time Enough for Love. Um, very culty, but very Heinlein. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I'm finally, I'm, I'm starting to get a little eh with Heinlein. Um, Although basically Heinlein is, is half like weird, um, harem fiction and, and culty stuff. And then half having an excuse to spout political opinions, um, and, and political philosophies that are actually kind of interesting, but it's just like, it's so hard to take you seriously, man. You're clearly just, uh, I don't know. It's rough. Uh, the Bulletproof Diet, Lose Up to a Pound a Day, Reclaim Energy and Focus, Upgrade Your Life by Dave Asprey. Uh, it wasn't completely useless. Um, but yeah, every diet you have to take with a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lots of, lots of grains of salt. Um, although avoiding salt is probably also decent, a decent choice. The Halfling's Gem, uh, which is a Forgotten Realms, the Icewind Dale, uh, the third, third book in the Icewind, Icewind Dale trilogy by R.A. Salvatore. It was good. It wasn't great. Mm. Um, and then Trigger Warning, Short Fictions and Disturbances by Neil Gaiman. Now, a lot of people really, really loved this. I'm always interested. I go into Goodreads after I read something. I'm like, oh, all of my friends loved this book. I was like, it was, it was decent. Um, nothing, it didn't, it didn't just like grab me though in a way that, uh, that, uh, that I, I presume it did for other people. Um, now there are three books on this, on this, uh, three star thing that I need to talk about. So one is Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. Another one is Leviathan by Thomas Hobbes. And then we have A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Here is the thing. Here's an embarrassing thing. I need to confess this because this is, this is, this is sad and embarrassing and troublesome. I can't really tell you what happened in those stories. 
I know that I read them, and um, I looked up, like, Cat's Cradle real quick, and I started reading the synopsis again. I was like, oh, yeah, no, I remember this vaguely. But even then, it's like, I remember, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's it's like uh, if you were watching a TV show toward the toward the end of, of the night. Like, oh, yeah, I remember, and then there's a guy, and uh, right, I don't remember. I don't know why this is. I have a lot, I, I noticed that this happens more with, sort of classics or books that I feel like I ought to have read that I get to the end. I'm like, I don't <sighs> Leviathan. I remember a little bit more of, but even then I remember parts of it and not, not the whole thing. Cat's Cradle, not so much. Tale of Two Cities, not so much. And it's embarrassing because these are books where like, yeah, I probably should have, should have known what these are. Um, I don't know. Is this, is this something that you encounter? Like if there, are, if there's books, that, if there are books that you're like, oh, this is literature that you just discover like, oh crap, I accidentally just spaced out. I know I read this book, but I don't remember. I just, no, whole thing is a blur. Um, part of this is that I'm reading so much that I don't have like the, oh, I read a book and now I'm just going to let it spin around in my brain for a week. Like I finished a book and then like, okay, two hours later, I'm listening to or reading another book. All right. Three stars. We've gotten past the three stars. It is time to jump into the four stars. The very exciting four stars. We'll just tab down. We're getting we're getting close to the end. Let's start off with the Hadfields, because um, actually I think this is why I started reading the Hadfield, uh, the the uh, Carson Mack Adventure. The Atlantis Ship is the first book in the Carson Mack Adventure trilogy. This is by A. C. Hatfield as well. I talked it briefly in, in the three stars. This is great. It's Firefly ish. And it's great. And uh, then I think, so then I also have here An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth by Chris Hatfield. Chris Hatfield's awesome. He has a boss, right? Um, Chris Hatfield's amazing. Uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the David Bowie on the, on the space station, plus all of the, all of the, all of the various videos and stuff on the space station. Plus he just went to the Arctic. For no reason, I'm, presumably he had a reason. Um, I don't know. The guy's awesome. This book was awesome as well. I very much enjoyed it. Four stars for me uh, for that. And I think it was while I was searching for that book that I was like, oh, there's, a, oh, well, sure, the Atlantic layout. Let's let's listen to that. Um, okay. Um, uh, there there are a couple here that I did talk about uh, on the. Oh no no I had to well so there's one there's one on here that I talked about. Two on here. Mm. No, there's one on here that I talked to, that I did a review on, um, and that is Death by a Cliche by Bob Defendi, which again is, uh, yeah, lots of cliches, but also sort of gaming and, and tropey stuff. That was uh, our, our review for uh, for last week. Um, we have Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear by Elizabeth Gilbert, um, the author of Eat, Pray, Love. Now, uh, if you've watched Elizabeth Gilbert's TED Talk on creativity, um, she is unapologetically uh, crazy <laughs> in that she likes to say, yeah, like, let's, let's just imagine that creativity is like this, like magical fairy dust. Like, let's, let's take that idea seriously because it's useful. Um, and that having, having a, a scientific, like, nope, this is with the brain, the, the putting the, putting the stress on ourselves to be, uh, creative and, um, taking credit for our successes and stuff is, is actually causing us a lot of problems. And so, you know, even if something is false, doesn't mean that it's not useful. And so, hmm. um, anyway, I, I, this book kind of ex expands on that idea and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, we have the good girl by Mary uh, Kubica. And this is one where the problem is that I'm, I'm confusing it with everything. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. The good girl. Oh yeah. No, this is good. I'm confusing it with another one that I read like right around the same time that we'll talk about when we get to the five stars. Um, the good girl is also very, very good. Um, this is the, uh, the, the premise is that the, this daughter of a very, uh, wealthy and, and hoity toity judge, um, gets kidnapped. And, uh, there's, there's some, uh, uh, Stockholm syndrome, stuff going on and I don't want to spoil anything. It's good. There's, um, oh, I can't say anything without spoiling anything, but my criticisms, I think the, the only criticism I have would be about the, the big spoilery thing. I guess that's as, that's as transparently opaque as I can possibly be. Um, H is for Hawk by Helen McDonald. Um, this is actually, it was, it was, I don't know, this is an interesting read. Didn't expect, uh, didn't expect to necessarily enjoy it, but this is about a training uh, training a, a, a goshawk. Is it goshawk? I think that's the word. Goshawk. Well, it's, it's a type of hawk. Um, 
which is weird. Sort of, uh, sort of a, sort of a character study, and then also just dealing with the hawk. I don't know. It was an interesting read. Um, and then we have two physical books. Finally, some physical books to round out for. Now, I did a, I did a book review um, on the Order of the Stick uh, comic book, uh, Dungeon Crawl, Dungeon Crawl and Fools. That's book one. I have since read some more of these, and two of them ending up in uh, four stars. So, second book here. Uh, no Cure for the Paladin Blues. Also very, very good. This is the point where basically they, uh, the author is, is, has established sort of these characters that have been, you know, okay, we're going to make fun of Dungeons and Dragons and we're running around in this dungeon. This is the point where they leave the dungeon and actually can have like lives and backstories and, you know, experiences. And so it's cool to see um, the author, the artist, the, I don't know, what, what do you prefer to call yourselves? Car uh, cartoonists? I don't know. Um, it's cool to see uh, Rich Burley, the Burley, 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 yeah, Burley, um, kind of uh, really pulling, jumping out and, and having fun with that. Um, and then also there is this, um, which is the prequel book, which is stuff that never showed up on the actual webcomic. So you can't read this unless you bought the book. Um, this is uh, on the <laughs> on the origin of PCs, which is just so clever. Um, basically just backstory about, uh, about the characters, which is, which is, which is fun. It's black and white because it is, that's because, you know, cost savings, but it's an enjoyable read. Um, I didn't, I don't think these, uh, I, I didn't want to give all of these, I don't know. I, I didn't want to give them all five stars. Um, but these, these two went into the four stars. Now in the five stars, uh, we actually have, uh, books that we already talked about. Um, books that we've done the book reviews are so the first one of course is as I mentioned dungeon crawl and fools If you haven't if you haven't gone and read order of the stick Just google it and go read some comics on the web because it's an enjoyable it's an enjoyable thing and then everything I told you by Celeste Ng Just phenomenal like truly just just fantastic um, I've, I've, I've said enough about it. I think you should just drop everything and go read that But anyway, those are all of the books that I've read <laughs> I need to figure out a better format to do these wrap-ups because man, this takes forever, right? We've got so many books, so many books to go through. Um, so this is 42 books. I am, uh, I think about 20 ahead of schedule to meet my goal of one book a, a day by the end of the year. Um, we still have uh, NaNoWriMo coming up in November though. And definitely wanna do that, which may mean less time available for reading. Although it shouldn't really be a trade-off between reading and writing, but I want to, uh, I want to make sure that I'm in. A, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've set aside some time to do some NaNoWriMo stuff. So, hopefully, if we can get ourselves get ourselves ahead, then we'll be in a good place to end the year in a strong place. So that's what I've been reading. Definitely would recommend if you are if you are a creative person, um, I'd recommend reading Big Magic: uh, Creative Lincoln Beyond Fear by Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, if you are any, if you are a person who uh, inhales and exhales, uh, everything I never told you by Celeste Ng, definitely, definitely read it. And if you're a nerdy type of person. Go read Order of the Stick, or or pay the or pay the person money because they work really hard. Either one of those things seems quite reasonable to me. Let me know what you've been reading down in the comments. Let me know um, what you, if you have suggestions as, as to how we can shorten this up. I know people do seem to, to enjoy the the wrap up more than the the standard book review. So, we'll, so I I wanted to still kind of do it, but man, this is getting this is getting long. Other than that, have a fantastic rest of your uh, rest of your time. I will be back next week with the book review or maybe something else, um, and uh, we will see what we can go ahead and read for uh, October. Man, it's October already. It's crazy. All righty, have a good one. Cheers. <laughs>